his cheering of the goal is so sad. It's so unconvincing. It's so not. <laughs> It's so not fully in. It's like when you're trying to get excited about a game that just doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, it's like cheering a, a goal scored in, in EA Sports FIFA. Let's start with Camp Ron Ron's magical mystery tour to Saudi Arabia, where he's already been pictured shirtless, astride an exercise bike, cool. placed in the center of the locker room, celebrating <laughs> his teammates' goals. And he could make his debut, I love this, in surprise, surprise, a friendly game against... PSG and Lionel Messi on January 19th. <laughs> what do you make of all of this, Rock Elio? <laughs> oh, live golf walked so Al Nusser could fly. Oh, there'll be cheers resounding around all the White House <laughs> oh, with news that Ronaldo has joined the Saudi Arabian League. And we wrote in Gods of Soccer that if Lionel Messi represents the wonder of the modern spectacle, then Ronaldo is its glare which is something I've thought a lot about as it was announced that Ronaldo has signed for Al Nusser in Saudi Arabia. The contract will run for two and a half years until June 2025. Total salary reported at $214 million per year when commercial agreements are factored in. Thought to be the highest salary ever paid to a professional footballer. We have to remember... Ron Ron had been without a club since ending his second coming at Manchester United by, quote, mutual consent. And the truth was, he would proclaimed he wanted Champions League football. He wanted a player at the highest level. But the reality, no Champions League wanted him or could afford him. Nor did any serious club in Europe after watching him leave the Juventus locker room in sorry shape. And then Piers Morganing his way out of United. He's gone to a league which has currently no broadcast deal with the UK or the USA. In truth, this deal is really to bring, well, partially Ronaldo's waning talents on the field, but more importantly, his 525 million Instagram followers off it, essentially acting as a global megaphone for the Saudi brand as they isolatiously the opportunity to host World Cup 2030. And Jonathan Wilson tweeted, worried about Al Nusser's pressing game. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm worried too about Al Nusser's locker room chemistry. And I do believe the solution is to give Ronaldo his own locker room. A yeah. locker room made of gold. <laughs> but what do you make of it, David? It's just funny. I mean, that scene with him on the exercise bike, uh, watching his his team play. I mean, it was so odd. Um it's surreal. I mean, he's. I find it a little bit more tragic. I think that so many fans, and even part of me, let's face it, is approaching this with some glee. I regard it as a tragedy. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo had moments at Manchester United. We can erase it. We can try to forget it. But he had moments. He had some goals that he scored for that team, especially the, uh, you know, uh, was it last season, the season before last? I can't remember. That were just phenomenal Still had so much football in him. A player of who, if you've ever seen him play live, you know, I remember watching him play a friendly for um, Real Madrid. I think it was here in LA at some point. And it was just a preseason game. And it was just phenomenal to watch him uh, on the ball at his at his peak. What a player. And this is the end for it. I think it's all very, very sad. And it also just speaks to this, you know, the sports washing the greed of football, the amount of money is absurd and obscene. Um, it's just all quite sad. There is going to be a, a money awash. I mean, piles, piles of cash. King's ransoms will look at the amount of money that Ronaldo is getting and be like, oh, that's a lot of money. But I do think there's no money that can pay for the dent to dignity and legacy. You know, Taking generational wealth to play in Saudi Arabia, where it should be noted also, Lionel Messi is an ambassador for the Saudi Tourist Board. But essentially, they're both being used to cover over the Khashoggi bone saw murder. And it's not something which is going to right side of history, Ronaldo, should we say. And Bonnie Rene and The Guardian captured it really well. He said that the move to Al Nusser is obviously not real. This week, Lekit called Ronaldo's contract an economic aberration. But this only stands if we accept that it's related to football. 
to call Ronaldo the highest paid footballer in the world, it's like calling Tom Cruise the highest paid fighter pilot. <laughs> There's a reality issue here. <laughs> Ronaldo's no longer engaged in sport. He's an actor, a publicity megaphone, a tool of power. And yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff on Twitter. People, Twitter warriors saying, relax, Ronaldo won't be crying on that $200 million a year. But he will, he will, because he's a creature of excellence. He's a high-performance race car. He is a racehorse used to winning who's suddenly been put out to stud. And no amount of money, no amount of Ronaldo getting people to call him maverick is going to replace that thrill that he used to chase of facing down all opponents and knowing that he can beat them, that he can smite them at will. To me, Davo, you know, this is Ronaldo, the Vegas Elvis years, and we all know how that ended, but we did ask over Twitter what the American equivalent is, and I don't know what you think, Davo, but there's a lot of Phil Nicholson's to live golf. At Hennig Camp came out with a deep cut from history, that this is Tarzan, Johnny Weissmuller taking a job as a Vegas casino <laughs> creator at Baz King 8. <laughs> I'm very happy that there's seven other Baz Kings, Baz King 8. Um, yeah. A 55-year-old Tom Brady signing for the Chicago Bears, which hurt, but it's true, David. What do you think is the American equivalent? Oh, my word. I have, uh, I have no idea. I mean, I don't think there is an American equivalent of anyone going and signing for this obscene amount of money that is a multiple on what anybody else would go and pay for him and not even a multiple there's no champions league side that would have that would have taken him so i don't really know what it is i'm just there was there was a moment like i've watched that video of him on the exercise bike in the uh in in the locker room around some of his new teammates and it's almost like his cheering of the goal is so sad it's so unconvincing it's so not <laughs> It's so not fully in. It's like when you're, you know, trying to get excited about a game that just doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, it's like cheering a, a goal scored in, in EA Sports FIFA. Um, it's not when your team scores. It's just not real. Um, so, yeah, I find it sad. I mean, it is fascinating. This is a story, this is my last word on it, which incorporates both, I think, the drivers of football in our present, you know, 2023 the end of the Ronaldo Messi era. That's what we are watching now. Yes, the beginnings of the Mbappe, Haaland era, but also the second and connected story, one of which is the money of Saudi Arabia and Qatar are going to be the biggest shaper of the game, blurring the lines as they do so, as we've just seen with the World Cup and you know the fake fans being imported from Lebanon to cheer the Qatari national team being paid to cheer and watch and pretend to be Qatari. Just the constant blurring of the lines between the real and the fake. And, and, and when Ronaldo was announced, Saudi Arabia's sports minister tweeted to make clear this was a state project and that further big money foreign signings will be brought to the league through government backing. And so even as he becomes the past, Ronaldo, in a way, is also a symbol of the future. And it's pretty bloody dystopian, David. OK, Rog, well, I don't know if this is uh, dystopian, but it is certainly uh, jumping from one footballing soap opera uh, to the next, or at least to a Greek tragedy, maybe. Or maybe it's from Greek tragedy to soap opera. I've got no idea. This one playing out here on American shores, Rainergate Day 6. This is our special team coverage at Men in Blazers. As it feels like we're the only people doing it. As we continue to sift through the debris of last week's car crash, there was a remarkable report over the weekend that US soccer had targeted one of the big Biggest names in global football for its next manager, the snappy red white Zizou headline writes itself, Rog. Yeah, Dave. Last week on MIB, we spent day after day trying to grapple with the, the truly complex and, and traumatic details and repercussions of the Burholt Arena childhood friendship turned into World Cup spurred feud which has left a truly dark shadow over US men's soccer in the wake of the tournament. Really a battle which will leave no winners. Berhalter, Reina, US soccer all look pretty oh, challenged in this moment. And the Zidane story came from, as you say, a Lakeet report, which was validated by ESPN. 
Uh, Zizou rejected an approach from the U.S. Soccer Federation to become head coach of the men's team. ESPN's Julian Laurent asked Zidane's agent, Alan Migliaccio, if he'd be interested, his client, in succeeding Greg Berhalter. That in itself is a surreal sentence. Would Zidane be interested in succeeding Greg Berhalter uh, on the U.S. bench? To which the Frenchman politely said, no. And Zidane, that 1998 World Cup winner, turned 50 last June. He's had no club since the end of his second spell in charge of Real Madrid in the summer of 2021. He was deeply linked to the French national team job. Um, But his next role, all we know is it won't be with the US and it won't be with Brazil or Portugal, who are also reportedly keen on the three-time Champions League winning coach. Davo, what do you make of it all? Yeah, I mean, who knows exactly what the truth is. I'm sure that US soccer or people connected with US soccer have been, you know, putting out some feelers, probably on LinkedIn or at various leadership conferences <laughs> going on around the world um, to see to see who would be um, interested, um, uh, and yeah, I'm not surprised that 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 Zizou turned it down. It's a tough thing for a a French World Cup legend to go and coach another nation's team. Um, it's a it, it's a difficult thing, and I think right now with this mess, I do think U.S. soccer maybe has got a little bit of a marketing problem in the world of. Uh, in the in the in the coaching world, who exactly wants to step into this mess uh, right now until there is some clarity? Um, so yeah, that's I guess what I make of it. Yeah, I spoke to US Soccer who refused to comment on the report. So that, this is where we are on the day in which Roberto Martinez, our mate, another name off link by fantasist to take the United States men's job. God, that man, all I can say is he must interview so bloody well, Dave. PowerPoint must be incredible. Amazing. He got the Portuguese national team job. They saw the work that he'd done in just failing in tournament after tournament with uh, the golden generation of Belgium and said, that's what we need. Roberto, a lovely, lovely man, possibly the loveliest man in football. But wow, did we in the US dodge a bullet? Look. This Zidane thing could be one of a number of things, and it's impossible right now to say which. Zidane's agent could be planting the story for a reason that we don't know after a weekend in which, as I say, Didier Deschamps received a contract extension with the French national team until 2026. And that was reportedly the one job Zidane was said to be interested in. So there is a scenario where Zidane's agent is just reminding every single big club team in Europe that ZZ is open for business should they fire their guy, (coughs) Chelsea. But let's say (laughs) United States soccer did approach Zidane. It still could be one of a couple of things. It could be a sign that US soccer are putting together a list of possible candidates, a pool of talent taking some mighty swings as they do so, which I will say, if that's true, that's a great thing to be applauded. But if it was a cheeky rifle shot at Zizou, you've got to ask yourself, why in the world would that gent take this job? He's got no connection to the United States, no emotional connection. Has talked as recently as last year, how he still needs to work on his English as a second language so he could even coach in the Premier League. I mean, this is Probably not a serious feeler for anything other than PR purposes. Also, you know, you'd see what he's what he's excelled at is taking an elite team of world class talents and making them poor, which is a very different challenge than taking a young raw group of Americans and building them into more. But we need to brace ourselves as US fans. There's going to be a lot of these kinds of reports over the next few months as US soccer continue their investigations and we're kind of left with a vacuum. This is what's going to fill that vacuum. And the fact that US soccer has declined the opportunity to knock it back suggests that they're either truly going out into the field to find a big managerial name to lead our nation in 2026, which is, and this is me editorialising, exactly what they should be doing. But I've said this a number of times, the US have got to get the biggest name who is a good fit Both aspects are crucial for our idiosyncratic nation. Zidane's not that person. Ancelotti at least has a real tie and affection to North America. His wife's from Vancouver. He loves being here. But at the same time, this could all just be US soccer trying to put out news into the football world to distract from the real housewives of New Jersey tabloid crappery that the Burhalters, the Rainers are currently involved in, which which is just a massive black eye for all parties. 
You know, this conversation came up with a few of my mates the other day about who would be the right person to come in for the US. And we were talking about what manager has has come into a very a situation where there's been a lot of drama, where there's been, you know, lots of um, you know, issues between the federation and the players and the and the players and the previous manager, and then gone on and taken the team to success. And the name that came up was interesting. It's Walid Regragri, the uh the Moroccan national team manager who by the way was not even on anybody's radar before the world cup but there's a guy who knows how to uh knit together and succeed after enormous i know that's not the kind of big name you're talking about rog but it's the guy who's got the right level of experience to go and do the job listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods but first subscribe here for more men in blazers videos and courage Go, go, go.